hardware. Oh, there we go. Just booting up all the thingies we need. Oh, okay. This is how we do behind the scenes, baby. Uh, getting this stream going. I have uh, not been getting up at 2 p.m. for my 2 p.m. streams on Saturday. <laughs> I just haven't been up. So what I'm doing instead is uh, 6 p.m. on Saturdays. So let's put Twitch Studio away. We're not going to actually be using that. We're using OBS today. Um, so OK, the audio looks good. I'll be double checking it uh, today. I've got to get my headphones so I can do that. Um, and a few other things. I'm going to set up the light here because this one over my head is not good. I've got a couple of good lights to help fill up the space, make things look like something not yellow. Uh, let me see what I can do. Let's see. First of all, overhead light with the fan. Lovely, but not needed. Next. We have this, ooh, yeah. Lovely filler light. You can try some different temperatures. I like a little, uh, I don't know, what do you think, warmer side? The camera's gonna compensate for some of it, so. Uh, meanwhile, we have sunlight coming in this way, but I am blocking it. I don't want a bunch of sunlight coming in today. It's like 110 degrees out today. It's ridiculous. I had a uh, 3D printed thing in the window and uh, <laughs> it was getting all soft. I had to pull it out and like make sure it was staying flat. It's that uh, Marlin sign. Actually, it's a good thing because it's actually got a little warped from being in the sun before, so it was a perfect chance to get it all flattened out and stuff. So anyway, uh, what are we working on today? Let's see. Well, as you can see, I've got I'm, <laughs> I've been patching things without checking, without building them in the um, continuous integration system, so I keep missing little typos. I'm like, ah. I'm like, oh, this is fine. I'll just carry on because I'm trying to focus on this string class now. So I'm like, oh, patch, okay. So, sorry, overnight the uh, Marlin would break if you tried to build TFT, but it's fine now. I, you know, heck, it's the bug fix branch. That's what it's for. You want, it's got to live up to its name. There's bugs in it to fix. Uh, meanwhile, yeah, that thing is bright. I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle that in my eyes, but I might try bouncing it off the wall or something like that. I also have a really nice light that I got recently that's an LED light. Um, modern LED style lamp and it's really meant to just you know um, reflect the light off the ceiling so I dig that I might have to uh, go grab that and just kind of get the get the light in here a little better so I can look at the screen without <laughs> going blind so uh, give me a minute and I'll be right back uh, oh I'll get my other camera set up too in case I need to do any uh, lab stuff uh, but yeah today we're focusing on uh, this string class and um, just kind of checking to see what kind of patches I need to make or if there's any patches lingering uh, and just kind of looking at the stability and state of Marlin since the most recent release 2.1 and 2094 and I plan to tag uh, the 2.11 and 2095 very soon because there are uh, there have been a lot of little you know tweaks and patches made if you're downloading the head of these branches 21x or 20x uh, you'll be getting some of these patches already, so then um, they're just there to, you know, it's not like it changes functionality or adds features, so it's like, I don't feel too bad about having them up there <laughs> for you to download. I'm kind of like, the idea is that we have a bug fix branch, which is probably going to have who knows what bugs in it, and we're going to have, uh, you know, a couple of release branches that are definitely buildable, and at least we know that much, and most of the bugs are worked out, and then we have um, these head branches that are like there with, you know, it's the release plus any patches that we're very confident in, and that's the general idea. And that way, you have something that's sort of like a beta lingering, but I don't want to tag betas all day. Um, it's just, there's just a continuous stream of work on this, so it's like um, coming up with beta numbers and stuff and deciding when, a, when to call something a beta and what is going to be the official release is tricky. Uh, we are just basically just catching up to all the things that are supposed to be in a 3D printer firmware, and it's like, we don't even have time to say, okay, let's pick up the next, you know, let's pick this feature and that's going to definitely be in this release because we can't even predict that we'll have something uh, precisely ready. Like we were talking about input shaping, which is, you know, 
reduce all the uh, vibration of your printer so that the uh, surfaces look nice. We have some ideas about that and we're working, uh, I've got a little working group going and um, we're just kind of chatting about it. Mostly it's very informal. But there's some ideas and some things are being experimented with by people who have more time to experiment and less uh, time sucked into the daily maintenance of the project. So I'm really happy that they're there to help. Um, anyway, I'll stop whining about my overwhelming workload. It's not that horrible. I mean, it's, you know, it's not like someone has a gun to my head, but these things are, they feel timely. You know, I really feel like input shaping is, is going to be an important thing and we need to get it in there it's in some regard, you know, to, you know, I'm seeing these people print doing these print speeds and it's like, yeah, check this out. I'm using Clipper. Woo! I'm losing RepRap firmware. Woo! It's flying. And it's like, uh, <laughs> why aren't we flying? So there's obvious reasons. Um, the S-curve acceleration actually is sort of a, does help mitigate some. So I, I'd say that's worth a try. I mean, we can talk, I'll talk more about the theory when I get back uh, from getting my, my little extra bits here. I have my iced coffee today. Mm. So that should help keep things flowing. Um, and otherwise, uh, yeah, so hold up a sec and I'll, I'll get set up for proper, proper streaming. We can get into this uh, stuff that I'm working on, particularly uh, the string helper class. Also, we're going to be looking at uh, a new update to platform IO. You're going to have to get 6.1.0 to build the next version of Marlin uh, once that 6.1 is out. It's still in beta right now, so I'm not requiring it, but I'm getting ready to require it and start requiring versions and just let you know. When you try to build, you'll get a message like, sorry, you can't do this with Mar um, with platform IO 601, although you might be able to. The main thing is that they, they deprecated monitor flags, which is like a, or monitor, what is it, monitor something? <laughs> I've forgotten what it's called now. It was called monitor flag uh, something, and now it's, it's got a bunch of different um, now it's each each thing that used to be all combined is now in separate little settings. So it's fine. Most most of the time we don't use those, but it is in there for my convenience. And it's like uh, if I go to build, it actually will complain and not build. It'll just not build. So it's like why? Um, or maybe it's maybe it is. I don't know. I have to I have to double check. I think it just says I don't recognize this. And I think that what happened was I was like, oh, it's not building, and that must be because of this, and then it turned out to be something else. And I was like, oh, okay, so it does build. <laughs> so maybe requiring it isn't that important, but I will at least um, put a message in like, oh, you should use. Uh, you know, when I know that it should be used, I'll say you should. And then if I know that it has to, I'll just stop and break out and throw, throw an error. But I think in this case, I might just be printing a message. I don't know, I have to try it out and see. Anyway, uh, right back.
How's that? Okay. Uh, better? Get a little more light in here. Um, there is one more thing. Oh, I wanted to hook up the cam. The other cam. I'm going to get wireless microphones one of these days. Okay, let's get this out. And we'll just point this over. I know it's uh, actually one of the other things I wanted to do for sure today is um, try and get that simulator running so that I can do uh, Marlin testing stuff and show it on the screen. And actually, I mean, this camera is useless as far as that goes. And then as far as uh, this camera goes, like, you know, can you even, um, you know, again, they all tend to blow out the, when you try to look at the screen, but that's not bad. So if I had a better HD cam, basically, instead of a crappy, cheap web webcam uh, style thing, it would probably be much better. It's like a 720p Logitech um, cam, and the other one is a better one, <laughs> um, slightly better. So, okay, let's uh, get things here, and yeah, okay, so... <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> so how's everyone doing today? I don't expect a lot of folks to pop up uh, in the chat, but I will make a note that I am streaming um, to the world, maybe, just to let you know. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, everyone, uh, the things on Saturday that take up everyone's time are like your loyal Moses channels and your um, makes, uh, there's another maker channel. Um, with uh, all kinds of things going on. So it's like, also 2 p.m. is just gonna interfere with that, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm starting a little later and that'll help to clear some time, clear some space. And if you happen to be stopping by around dinner time in your area or whatever it happens to be. So yeah. Um, This is like not really a revenue stream thing for me. I'm just doing this to kind of keep you guys in the loop a little bit and you can take it or leave it. I mean, I do a lot of long streams and then post them. So I don't expect you to, you know, see the whole things and it's hard to skim them necessarily. And I don't do chapter markers or anything like that. I'm just posting them for posterity. If someone else wants to add chapter markers. Maybe I'll, you know, come on down. We'll <laughs> work on my, fix up my videos at some point. Um, but yeah, I could maybe do some kind of chapter markers, edit them down or something, but I'm just really just trying to get, get this stuff out there and let you know that I have a Twitch stream that you can stop by, see it live and you don't have to deal with the, um, trying to skim it later stuff. Uh, that would be my recommendation. Just don't worry about the streams that are already up because there's a lot of repetition. We're going through a lot of the same issues again and again, things like refactoring the code and converting things from old style C to C++ and trying to modernize things. The string class is a big example. I mean, there is already a string class and I looked at it to compare to what um, had been produced by Copilot. And I don't remember if we were looking at Copilot together last time. Uh, but yeah, this new string class is pretty neat and I'll, I'll give you a, a quick peek at it, but it's it's not, very different from the class that is provided in W string or something like that. Uh, it's one of the Arduino headers. It does have some extras that I, I like, and it's also made to be temporary. It's like uh, it allocates a temporary buffer uh, of a certain size, and it's always, you know, the trouble I'm having right now is that it's actually not working. <laughs> I'm crashing my, my tester, and I'm trying to figure out why. So that's the next. That's kind of where I'm at now. So I just uploaded it and we're just going to do a quick monitor. And I actually have some debug code in there. I'll show you that. Um, maybe we'll keep using this one editor today. We'll try not to, I'll try not to go into Sublime because what I've been finding is with Sublime, um, let's just hide every, all the windows in Sublime. Maybe that'll help. I've been finding that when I go to Sublime, it's just, um, you know, I forget that I'm in Sublime and I'm expecting Copilot to start giving me hints and I'm like where are you copilot and I'm like oh of course so yeah it looks too much like this you know they just make I forget which one I'm in depends on how tired I am I guess uh, as well so anyway again how are we doing today folks uh, in backward America and the world at large I 
So, uh, yeah. So uh, there's a lot of folks out there. I've been kind of like, uh, I've been here whining in my ear occasionally uh, about um, the economy and the inflation and trying to like, you know, lay all the blame on like the president or whatever. And it's like, I'm not a fan of this president or that president or this party or that party. I completely evaluate things on the conduct or at least the public conduct and the policies and stuff that are being enacted. And certainly public conduct of certain people is like embarrassing and sad. And so, uh, you know, I, I, I'm happy to like, if someone on the left or the right is like a total twit and jerk asshole, I don't care. I'll criticize them. I don't care where they're from. <laughs> uh, so I'm not like, you know, a big partisan hack or anything. I really am interested in what works, you know, what does work, what works what's real and you know and it's there's a lot of talk out there oh my opponent you know if you elect him the economy will tank if you elect that person you know uh, things will be great whatever it never works out that simply it's never that simple presidents for example cannot control the economy or the weather because if they could every president would like try to make the economy great and they would just simply push the great economy button every time they went into office and, and then people would assume, oh, well, if they're not, if the economy's not great, they must have just, they may not, they just don't want to press the great economy button. And I'm like, ah, it's not that simple. And, uh, and to break it down to that kind of simplicity is just lazy. And I've just been seeing a lot of that. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm watching. <laughs> I'm watching and I'm seeing what you're up to. And I don't, and I, I get it, you know, you want to like, yeah, everybody's got to like, Find some of the blame, some of the blame, some easy target, and like you know, they'll probably pick the one they're already they're already target practicing on already. And I just see a lot of this kind of partisan hackery around. It's like what works, you know? What? How does economics work? It's not a simple fucking subject, you know. I've taken a couple of economics courses, and you know, I remember supply and demand, <laughs> you know. Uh, interest rates, uh, you know, there's certain things, you know, that you could, the Fed can do certain things. And there's like, you know, if you have uh, high interest rates, certain things happen, low interest rates, other things happen. You can do things to stimulate the economy and so forth. And it's hard to know whether these things even work anymore these days, especially in the midst of, you know, post uh, pandemic insanity and with supply chain issues and all that. Like right now is just no time to be trying to pick any one factor as being the factor that you know if we just change it it'll fix everything because it ain't that simple it just isn't that simple there are certain things we can do and i like certain ideas like you know yeah we should bring more like chip fabrication into the states that would be excellent i would love to see that and i see that somebody recently in the government was saying oh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna uh, let this chip fabrication bill through unless you let my you know uh, crazy uh, ideological bill thing go through or whatever. I'm like, God, you know, it's like you can't hold everything hostage on this like partisan line. I mean, the chip fabrication thing is not going to just help libs or just help pubs. It's going to help everybody. So it's like, God damn it. You know, what is the point here? Of the, It's like everybody's just playing these fucking games with each other. It gets on my nerves after a while. It's like I, I always assumed we'd have the Star Trek future where we'd just be like <laughs> trying to improve ourselves, trying to make things better. All our bridges would be not just fixed, but like super highway quality at this point. And like, you know, we would just keep investing in our infrastructure and making things better and more efficient. And everybody could, you know, have an easier time of things getting from here to there and solving their problems and so forth. But no. <laughs> it's the game of keep away played by the alternative upper economy the one we the one that we are the uh, cattle for and uh and then we're the cattle and like you know it's just kind of like a fucking game it's just a game being played by the powerful against the weak as usual um so you know uh i'm not a fan of anybody powerful in general you know especially when they do stupid shit because it's the idea of like um if you have if you're 80 feet tall you know then you're not going to have the same freedoms as a person who's like a normal height. <laughs> you're going to be restricted. You can't walk over there because if you do, you'll step on a mall. You know, you can't go over there because, you know, because the street isn't strong enough to hold up your giant body. So, you know, there's regulations that would be different for you as a giant 80 tall foot tall person than for someone who's smaller. And the same goes for corporations versus individuals and so forth. You can't just say, 
individual you know, corporations are people. <laughs> They're hundred foot tall people that can step on you and crush you like without even noticing. So yeah, they have to be treated differently from individuals. And the same goes for their fucking uh, influence in politics and so forth. Obviously, uh, they're highly corrupting. And, you know, they don't have any kind of uh, skin in the game when it comes to whether we're a fascist uh, system or uh, autocratic or totalitarian or whether we have freedom or not. It doesn't matter as far as they go. Like, they're only looking at what works for their bottom line. And, like, they'll steer shit whatever way they have to to get it there. And if it turns out we go to fascism, or we go to totalitarian system, autocracy, it doesn't matter as long as things work for them. Of course, it's short-sighted. They might see trends going in a certain direction, but seriously, if they, if they do steer things that way and it does go that way, it goes off a cliff and everybody loses. Um, I mean, clearly, you know, if we're all basically on bread lines, like, it's not gonna be, <laughs> it's not gonna be good for any corporation anywhere except maybe, I don't know, Blackwater or stuff like that. Just watch out for people who profit from disaster. Don't let them into government because they'll be promoting disaster all the time. Uh, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not hearing a lot of this kind of stuff from, from my friends. They don't seem to think outside the box <coughs> and get into, like, you know, the, um, the wider scope of things. You know, what is the, what is the reality of these issues? They're always... Uh, well, you know, what we should do is we should become a system of, I don't know, anarcho-syndicalism, or we, we should do this, or we should do that. Like, none of it is that simple, and you're never going to get a f giant consensus around that. But, I mean, I like the idea of anarcho-syndicalism as a general concept. Maybe we can evolve that way, because it does involve a more consensus-based system rather than the kind of winner-takes-all system that we have now. And I kind of like the idea of proportional representation, in a sense, too, although... You know, again, we get this uh, right now is very divided. You get it's just black and white. You got red and blue. And that's it. You know, um, it's crazy. You know, that's it's kind of expected. You have those kinds of divisions because those when you want to win or whatever, you need to, you know, do all you can to make contrasts, set up contrasts between yourself and your opponent. If you look too alike, people will be like, well, I don't know. And, uh, so it's sort of like, yeah, I understand. I understand the marketing aspect of it, the public relations aspect of it. But honestly, like that stuff is po it's poisonous, but you, it can be poisonous in, this, in a certain sense. It's poisonous if the people are um, susceptible to all the gamesmanship and like want to play along. <laughs> and a lot of people do. They just want to play along because it feels good to play along. Oh, look, there's the bad guy. There's the good guy. And uh, yeah, I've been getting real sick of that dynamic. And, uh, you know, I, I think that we just have to really look at, you know, what works and focus on what works and try and solve problems and not focus so much on personalities, parties, and politics because, I mean, yes, politics is required. If you have disputes, you have to work them out in some way and come to, again, consensus in some regard. You don't want to scorched earth your, your opponent because you both have good points, maybe. So you want to, like, you know, there, there's, and everyone has, you know, a stake in certain outcomes and so stakeholders have to be considered not just stockholders there's a lot of issues involved and frankly I don't think we are adult enough as a society and in our politics and, and stuff if you certainly look at the way things are now people like spouting all this like yeah there's conspiracies and these guys are evil and those guys are good and uh, you know they want to destroy America <laughs> like oh god like um you know, can we get past the rhetoric, like, and actually talk about anything? Like, there's nothing to, it's all just junk. And it's like, uh, you know, so I hide away. I'm going to work on my code and, and enjoy it because at least in this realm, you know, I can try and focus exclusively on quality. There really aren't any politics involved. You know, once in a while I get a little bitch session with somebody who's annoyed with me <laughs> for not implementing something or implementing something or, say, or, uh, or having reservations about a submission, I can get into one of those, but it's usually pretty, um, pretty mellow around here. <laughs> you know, we just work on our stuff, and you know, once in a while people get annoyed because whatever. Oh no, I left a typo in, in the bug fix code. Ah, don't you even check your code, man? What's wrong with you? Um, like, yeah, when I'm when I'm awake, I do. When I'm, it's the end of the night, and I just want to throw a patch in, then it seems obvious, and then 
go to bed, I apologize. It means you have you have to deal with that typo for eight hours or <laughs> ten hours, whatever it is, while I'm asleep. But I, I'll get to it. I will. I'll get to it. I promise. I, I do apologize for not checking absolutely everything. But I, I, the, what I used to do is I would put everything through as a pull request, and that was like kind of a policy. But and then I, you know, there were smaller things that I would be like, well, this is obvious and small. But more recently, I just like did the search and replace on a type, and it looked seemed pretty cut and dry. But yeah, there were a couple spots where I just completely forgot to hit save or something, and it didn't get in. So I've been I had to patch that up twice. So a little annoying, but hey, that's how it goes. <laughs> it's annoying for me too because I was like, ah, I have to get up and face this. And I was gonna have my breakfast, but I gotta do this first. So anyway, so it's a it's a it's a joy around here, honestly. I love hanging out with the uh, people on Discord and talking about these issues, and trying to solve their input shaping and all these other things that are going on right now. Um, let me put on the uh, <clears throat> I put on the old stream deck here so I can switch views. Maybe you want to see my pretty face. Hi. <laughs> so I'm going to be gabbing. I might as well just keep this up. Um, but yeah. Um, what am I doing now? Okay, so I think I have most of what I need in front of me. I was gonna bring up. Uh, let's get on with this. Let's get on with this, shall we? This is an interesting time for me. I'm. Uh, I just turned 55, and uh, this is the age my father was when he died of a sudden, unexpected heart attack. But maybe kind of expected because his father died at 55. Same myocardial infarction. So I'm kind of like uh, <laughs> hoping I'll get through this year, uh, and maybe the next thirty would be good at least. Um, so I'm trying to bear on that, and uh, and so this is like, can I really focus on this, or should I go? You know, should I be focusing on uh, the meaning of life and stuff like that? Since I'm being given this reprieve, maybe if I don't die this year, then. Uh, can it mean? It could mean freedom. It could mean new things. It means a new life ahead. You know. But I, uh, the thing was, I was concerned about this. So, uh, 17 years ago, I, I quit eating meat, and so uh, hopefully the, the idea was that well, by the time I'm 55, I won't have accumulated those 17 years of plaques in my arteries from eating meat and stuff. And I think there was possibility that um, our genetics that we don't there's an enzyme you need to have to break down fats in your bloodstream effectively and if you don't have that enzyme you'll actually be much more susceptible to hardening of the arteries and heart disease and things like that sorry to keep shaking this it's like this whole room is <laughs> shaking um, but um, yeah so I thought maybe I didn't have that enzyme and that was because you know this seemed to be a thing also my father's brother had a stroke and so it was like well that's caused by build up of fats and small arteries and veins and capillaries and I was like well I don't want that so I think the best course is just to baseline cut it cut it all out and just you know and do yoga and stuff like that so that's what I did got jumped into yoga and, and went vegan and all that and I'm really sorry this keeps moving this desk is very it's not just the desk but I have this camera on an old new sonic monitor that is like <laughs> shaky as fuck so I'll try to keep things on the screen and then it won't shake as much um, so yeah anyway that's uh, that was my kind of like coder mind approach to trying to solve that problem but you know it's like uh, I get, had to give something up I had to change my whole lifestyle really just on, a, on, a, on the off chance that maybe it would help <laughs> so We'll see, but uh, here I am, 55, and I don't look quite as old as my dad did, which is good. Um, you know, I got my gray and white hairs. <laughs> I could show you a few, um, but uh, yeah, I'm uh, you know not no spring chicken, but I, I feel good. I feel right. You know, I've got a few energy issues. Teeth are not as good as they were when I was 25. This caffeine makes me freaking nervous as heck all the time. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> um, but uh, yeah so anyway I'm just gonna carry on with this and we'll see what we get face and code hello so let's take a quick look at the 
at the um, current state of pull request just to see if there's anything that needs immediate attention. So, uh, oh, look, someone's got a fixed M1 simulator 24443. I like the number. Great, because that's what exactly what I was about to play with, and uh, someone already did it. Um, that's great. That's great. Um, actually, uh, Rhapsody is, is really awesome. Uh, uh, Victor, They're really helpful. <clears throat> always, always on point. Uh, so let's go to bug 621. Oh, let's fetch that and make sure we got the latest. Okay. And let's go get that, grab that pull request and let's re or let's merge what we have. Get merge. Uh, the reason for this is so that I can make sure that when I push that merge, it should build successfully at this point. Um, I think that's the only, the only reason this is showing an error is because of my bad L chart, my new type, typo, typo, type, 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 typo. Yeah, it's the lurge K. I'm pretty sure that's definitely because of that. That was a TFT. I had a TFT glitch there for a minute. Mm. So, okay. Oh, we added something called Stack Protector Strong. Oh, that's interesting. It's a new thing I've, I've never seen. Um, I want to know. I want to find out if this is M1 only because I do need and I do actually want to still have the option to do an Intel build. Um, excuse me. My, uh, ah, this is my my first coffee of the day. And uh, my tummy is just adjusting. Okay, let's see what we've got going on. So this is wonderful. Yay. Uh, now let's take a look at his notes. Let's see what he says about it. GCC generate bad assembly for stack protector, disabling it to use the simulator. Oh, it's all you need. Okay. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is actually create a new target. Uh, and just make a note here. Let's see, stack protector strong. Um, if this is uh, incompatible uh, with uh, Intel build, I mean, I guess I guess I can check this, but I don't happen to have an Intel <laughs> machine to test it with right on, the, on my desk here. Uh, my, I've got this Intel M1. Mac Mini and a couple of laptops that are um, basically being repurposed for other things right now. <clears throat> I should use one as a NAS or something because like uh, keeping all my files straight sometimes can be a hassle. I'm like, oh, I've been working on the laptop, I've been working on this. And the reason, of course, I keep, uh, you know, you don't want to like put your Git repositories into your iCloud drive because if you did, it would mess up your setups on all I mean you'd have to make absolutely it doesn't sync the way you, you hope I mean I feel like it doesn't I don't know maybe it does like every time you request a file it should be grabbing the latest one but I don't know if it always is and so and they're all in a hidden folder so it's like checking that and dealing with that and you really wouldn't want that anyway so the idea is that you keep a working copy on all on each of your machines but then you have to deal with the fact that Oh, well, I was working on this branch or this thing over here outside the other day, and then I come home to my desktop, and I'm like, oh, I have this older version, but maybe I put other fixes in that I didn't include in my... <laughs> it's like, it's the same situation as if you have two people working on something. It's like, oh, I have to pretend you're two people and do all the things you would normally do. Or two. Uh, yeah, I was going to mention in my 55-year-old job, yeah, like, teeth. That's the biggest thing, man. I, if I could, uh, if I just had... My teeth would never fall out. That would be awesome. I noticed, though, there's a, um, at the uh, TCT show or whatever, um, <coughs> there was some looking at print printers with new resins that are good for, uh, that are biocompatible resins. And some of them are meant to break down, but others are, seem to be much more um, robust. And I'm like, wow, you know, this is a great time to really explore looking at getting, you know, dental things done with 3D printing. I mean, to not to digress too far, but I did actually do a web contract many years ago before I got into 3D printing for a company that made dental 3D printers, I think. <laughs> they, that was ostensibly what they were, but I wasn't sure if they were real. Uh, but they paid me, so I was happy. Um, 
but uh, yeah, they they had an interesting thing going on with a dental printer, and I was just like, oh, that's really neat that you can do that. But they were very sophisticated uh, machines at that time, and uh, probably had all kinds of crazy patents on them. But now we've got you know nice um, resin-based printers that we can use at home, and and some of the materials are pretty sturdy. I've noticed that they tend to be very brittle. Almost all resins are brittle. What you really want is something that's much more ductile. Um, the the material that your teeth is made of, which is uh, enamel covered um, bone, and that that actually works out to be fairly ductile, but it can get brittle. And of course, you, know, you introduce acid, and they break down very quickly. And I'm a I like my coffee, and I, <laughs> I like kombucha especially, and like so I have to drink them all through a straw <laughs> uh, to avoid my rotting my teeth now but um, yeah I've lost a few over the years and I haven't seen a dentist since probably 2001 so I'm about due to go and you know basically have all have a whole reconstruction done it may help because I've got this uh, you may have noticed when I talk my mouth is strangely asymmetrical and there might be it looks almost like I even notice that some people like it looks like they're chewing on something when they're not. <laughs> and it's just a matter of like teeth are there or they're not. And so it sort of throws things off. And I may have a little TMJ that kind of messes with my jaw. So that perfect symmetry you get from all your favorite celebs. Unfortunately, I no longer have all that perfection, alas. Um, and so uh, no, I'll never be Brad Pitt, alas, <laughs> but who'd want to be? Um, yeah, so I really actually, I, yeah, I wanted to know, um, uh, uh, is this option compatible with, uh, the, uh, Intel, I should say X86, uh, 64? build two if not we can uh, make a, a separate M1 uh, version uh, environment <clears throat> so I will take this though um, so the trick is um, Let's just show you, the, the simulator is actually a built-in feature of Marlin um, and just not used a lot. So you do is you go to your, uh, basically just you have to choose the right thing, but I'm just going to say, um, I think it's use example configs uh, simulator. I think that's how we did it. Does that get it? Let's take a look. Yes. Okay. So, yeah, there's an example called simulator and basically it says, it turns your uh, thing, it says board Linux ramps. Now, of course, it's not Linux. This is a Mac. So it's, but what it is, it's a native build. So we could call it native. And, oh, well, that's strange. This actually has, this one is, I guess, a little out of date. I'm going to have to fix it. There was a uh, there was an issue before like this where we had uh, funky characters, some weird Unicode characters, and sure enough, they're still there. Um, see, I assume it did get bug fixed two one. Yes, it did. Okay, weird. Okay, well, I'll just have to fix that right now. <laughs> um, let's go to import two one. That's where we manage our configurations, and I'll just make sure I get the latest, which I do. And we'll go to the simulator. So we are going to use this sublime for this here. So let's go. Let's get uh, simulator. Simulator. Boom. And it was the, uh, I think it was the ADVH version. And I notice it's not complaining here. Oh, I'm not looking at it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I'll get this in the sidebar. Uh, here we are, find Barrett. Okay, and what I'll do is just we'll get the old default, and we'll just copy over it, hopefully that, and the same with the main one. And that'll take care of some things. All right, so 
And then what I'll do is just go through and we will, hmm, interesting, fix some things. I can't decide about these uh, spacing here. Let's find out what makes more sense. Yeah, so that's the uh, more common, the less common one apparently. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's uh, dusty in here. I'm I just recently uh, had to pull the filter off my AC because it was uh, smelling funny. Uh, and uh, I ordered new ones. They're coming tomorrow. In the meantime, they're probably getting all kinds of funky dust in here that I'll have to uh, deal with later. <laughs> okay, let's replace those seven things. Get that out of the way. Um, right, okay, back to the simulator. Simulator has, that looks fine. Uh, but yeah, see, it's got that Unicode thing. What, where? Um, see, it's, it's in one of these uh, enabled lines. I'll have to go in and actually tweak it myself um, by hand. But yeah, these are some of these things are new. I guess this just hasn't been fully updated yet. But uh, all right, let's take care of what needs to be taken care of. So first off, uh, these are new. But yeah, that's supposed to be enabled with this config. And so is that. So we'll just keep those and then we'll just keepers. Um, and now to find that funky line, I'm not sure which one it is, but hopefully it's not too hard to find. See what are these? The four here. Ah, uh, that's the one. It's got to be this. Yeah. Okay. Everything else is good. Just poking through, just make sure it's all hunky dory, copacetic. Ah, oh, hate that reload. This uh, GitHub desktop version has been doing some funky things, and I do not know why. Um, <clears throat> uh, photo position, let's go to that. Apparently they got the photo cheat code in there, why not? Um, and the delay, okay. I guess it's pretty much the, anything we can put in the simulator, we'll put in. And the other thing is too, like, with the simulator, there's no limit to the build size. You can make a huge version of Marlin has, you know, everything you could possibly combine, and it would be fine uh, with that. I know. I just like to do that. <laughs> this is me being anal or OCD. I don't even know what it is. What am I doing here? Um, this is my OCD right here. Yeah, you know you like it. If I was doing appeal, you wouldn't complain. Uh, let's see. Oop, that one. Right. <clears throat> I'm not sure what this is doing when it reloads and 
kind of changes its position. So pick a position <laughs> and stick to it. Right. Gotta remember to commit these before I go make further edits. But yeah, everything looks pretty cool setting up there. Um, yeah, just fixing up some spaces. Yeah, I know this is why you tune into these streams. All right. Right. It has some funky characters in the commit, but it's, I think it's fine by itself. Um, so I could use, I guess I could use reveal hidden. I could do something like that, or I could do like a conversion, but um, yeah, I'm not seeing any uh, option to show hidden in Sublime. I know there must be something. We should say where <laughs> the this diff contains bidirectional Unicode text. Okay, the diff does. That's normal. Um, so I'm going to change this to boop. Um, what I want to call this, I guess, for simulator, the R. Bringing it up to date, I guess, essentially. It might have been something I wanted to change, but I don't remember. I don't remember. I can't remember. Uh, bring some configs up to date. Uh, yeah. And I guess I'll just go with. Uh, oh, I don't know. And we'll just deploy that. MF config in it. Good. Moving on back to Marlin. Um, okay. I just, yeah, that's right. I wanted to take care of the Unicode. That's why I did that. That was annoying. I don't like seeing those Unicode messages. And I know we had gotten rid of them a long time ago in most files, so I don't know how it ended up in this one. I should search further. There may be more. There may be more. Never-ending source of trouble, source code is. You know, I'll be starting every stream with a, a rant about, in my, an anti-political rant. Although I guess that's make you know even anti politics is politics. You can't escape. There are no absolute truths, and that's an absolute truth. All right, so we have got our simulator. Let's let's build it and see what we got. Oh wow, I haven't done the M1 fix yet. Let's borrow that. Oh, I also wanted to grab the. Uh, let's do a quick grab of the simulator again, and see if it gives us that annoying message. Hey, it's gone. See, it works. All right, so we're now good to do what we need to do. Uh, and that is get the fix from here. Uh, it's an option to detect heap corruption in the debug build. Oh, OK, it detects heap corruption in the build, but it's not needed per se. Oh, that's interesting. OK. Well, I'll take it. Bad ASM for stack protector. Oh, okay. So what is it? Turn off stack protector is what's going on. So disable. Okay. Gotcha. for uh, Mac OS uh, simulator. On one less letter, right? And uh, this is a build thing. And usually when we do build stuff, we do like, I don't know, 
hammer or what is it uh, wrench configuration I'm gonna go with I guess I'm gonna have to go with hammer on that one because it's not a development script per se but it is kind of part of that bunch of stuff it's part of the suite of things which are development scripty bits I don't know platform IO dot INI it's an INI file but I mean what do you call an INI file you know it's part of the build um, stuff it's a build tool thing okay so that's good and now I can grab that or rebase my code on that so let's do this um, oh what are we on oh okay good we're actually on the base simulator um, branch the one we were just looking at so I could actually do the build and see if it does what it's supposed to do which I could do um, let's try the, the debug build it's supposed to work I haven't done this in a, in a while I was gonna totally get into it today but it is building it should build quicker than I don't know um, it, you know like the embedded stuff let's see what I can do about the uh, noise on this mic as well at a certain point I can see there's like a, a low level of hiss or rumble on it it's very strange I've been through a few different microphones this is a cheaper uh, lapel mic lavalier mic but I actually have a second one which is supposed to be exactly the same but I think they actually are slightly different okay so you see now there's a run button and if you if you've been to the channel before you might have seen this before and it actually will run the simulator which loads up fast man okay that's good it used to be a little slower starting um, but yeah it's got the it's using a, uh, a standard suite of stuff so yeah there's our screen so I can actually do all my string code testing today in the simulator oh this is great the one thing is uh, there actually is also this this view port I really want to fix it because it's got some issues like here I'm doing the scroll wheel right now oh, and you can see it's zooming but way too slow and when you actually press the button and move on it it's like mm, it doesn't move like the way you would sort of expect it's more or less tilting the camera like rather than tilting the it should put this whole thing into a into a box and tilt the thing the thing itself and keep the camera fixed for facing forward instead but it's it's modifying the viewport position instead so whatever there's and I don't think there's a necessarily a way to and look we have four serial monitors nice so all kinds of good things here that we can do with the simulator um, but the main thing is you can do stuff like um, like here's actual G28 and it does a simulated G28 it's I think it's zooming yeah there it goes down it's a bit on the slow side but you can actually change the uh, you can go to max and have it go fast Whoop. And you can go real time and it'll just go at one so yeah and this is the uh, this is the speed factor right here so you can just change it to real time or whatever so if you haven't played with the Marlin simulator I totally you know and you know you want to just get into it and maybe if you're doing any kind of development or anything like that I highly recommend it um, it's pretty awesome and you know in general like there's some things I would totally start to I would want to start to change but I haven't gotten into it, the code base of this yet there's like uh, like I would like you know X and Y to be visible in sight like maybe a little square drawn on top of this where it's got like here's where you are you know and it shows like two crossing lines so you can very quickly see that's where you are you know just an overhead view since there isn't an overhead view here per se but it will do a simulation of a print and everything so you can like and there's a way to do a simulated SD card I actually have <clears throat> that around here um, but I can't remember I think it looks I gotta figure out remember how it did it um, but yeah it will actually use your simulated SD card and yeah you can do all that um, let me see if that's listed here as one of the options not at the moment so there's your print bed and stops triggered enabled so yeah all this kind of stuff like you can see they're enabled or triggered it's pretty excellent pretty excellent so if I do like say uh, g1 x50 it should change the 
Yep, now the XN stop is no longer triggered. So yeah, basically that's probably triggered on the basis of you know less than 10 or something like that, or whatever less than whatever the settings are. Uh, just based on position, I bet. And then we have all these pins, and you can like totally look at your pins as if they were you know pins, and you can just see their states right now. So check mark is you know high, and uh, no check mark is low. I would kind of prefer that the things would change color instead. That way you'd just be like, oh yeah, because otherwise, because now you have to like you don't see oh all the you know it doesn't stand out as being here's all the pins that are enabled. You see a bunch of check marks, and then you have to look to the right of them to see, oh, that pin is enabled. So yeah, these are things that need to be checked. This is an analog one, so that's the value, I guess. 3911, I assume hex. Uh, so it might say 3A11 at some point. But yeah, we can do things like we can try uh, turning on simulated heaters and see if they work, and things like that. So the, let's go with uh, M104 uh, S. We'll just go with 60. And the hot end heater is now going up. It says E1 heating. And when it gets up to 60, it should it should clear the, the message back to the uh, ready message, hopefully. Or maybe it'll say temperature reached. I forget. I have a callback on it now. Oh, it's ready. There it is, because it's within, it's within range. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I finally put callbacks on conditions on messages so you can say, yeah, this message will clear as soon as this condition applies, you know, or if some condition changes, then you know whatever. But all it's doing is it's like you know periodically calling a thing that says, "Should I clear the message?" Or it's, it's uh, is there a is there a message function? Call it, and then that'll be doing whatever. It could be updating the message. It could be doing all kinds of things, but and then eventually clearing the message. Like you could have a thing that is like a message runner, so to speak, and you could just throw that on. And you could just build things like that now. Uh, it's kind of the general idea, but yeah, I wanted to have something simplified, and yeah, it does involve a callback, but you know, a flag is one byte, callback is four bytes, or maybe eight if you've got a, an ARM. And I'm not worried on ARM processors about memory at all, <laughs> or size, pretty much at all, because we've got so much space on those. Um, anything like if anything over 256k, like 512k build, um, you can do so much you know we don't need to go much bigger than that marlin can be it's never going to be like a, i mean maybe i won't say i won't say never because we could we could include all kinds of crazy things in marlin but um let me get my face out of the way and move this over so you can see it better oh you know what might help actually i think you can drag these up unless i'm mistaken no you can't drag them i might put this at the top because that's kind of where it belongs but let me uh let me change the window size so you can see the there you go Nice way it resizes the window. So yeah, it's like, oh, it would work fine if I just, oh, oh, there we go. Okay, hey, look, there it is. There it is. Okay, so yeah, I could set this up to do two um, heaters or anything like that. Um, it's pretty cool. One is fine for, for our purposes. And you can see the string stuff is what I'm really all about checking now. So let's do that. Um, let's get rid of this discard our changes, go back to, we'll get rid of this branch that's already done. Um, I will look at this. I think that is probably at this point fine now. I had, I spent so much time working on the patching of this, but let's just quick take a quick peek and see, yeah, if pull requests are passing, that means it's fixed, basically, <laughs> or at least the build is fixed. We'll see whether the actual code is fixed sooner or later. <laughs> but yeah, let's, uh, let's push that. And I'll do the same in 2.1. And I'll do the same in uh, 2.0. I've been saving these to just until I knew that they were OK. Um, and even though it says 22 hours ago, I did just patch it recently. I patched the commit, and the commit kept its old time. Weird. Uh, that's what happens. So yeah, it's totally new and different, but the same. So everything is pushed now, 2021. Okay, good. So let's go back to our GLCD here. And I'm just going to grab, um, I'm going to create a new branch here. 
yeah, let's create a new one from, see it's, it still thinks 2.0 is the def, is the base and I, I totally changed this. I re-downloaded the Marlin re repo and was working with it for a while and it re and it's still new, bug fix 2.1 was the default and then it lost that info somehow. All right, we'll just call this BF2 sim, uh, sim string, uh, or maybe I should call this a uh, test bed because I've been doing this a lot. Config, uh, oh, config uh, test bed uh, sim M1, I guess. I don't know, we have to say M1. Uh, simulator. And I'll just call that that. At this point, now I've got a brand new branch. Um, now we go to, oh, this is still running. Let's quit that for now. I don't know how much uh, how much it'll heat up the old machine, but it, it seems like it's running really efficiently. All right, the use example config simulator. We get the latest, we'll include those in our branch. Um, simulator configurations, uh, we'll just go uh, base. And I'll just modify these as I see fit well, after that. Okay, and now I need to go and grab my string work, which is I've got a string refactor, um, string class PR, there it is. And let's just bring this over. Make sure I've got everything um, rebased here. Yeah, I just had to make sure it was all this stuff was in, including these two. Little follow-ups. Oops, 22 hours ago, one hour ago. Yeah, so for half a day or whatever, you had to deal with this stupid typo, and apparently that it needed it needed the types that I didn't include. So I wasn't sure about this. Um, I had to go searching see if tft string .h was ever included along with this, and then I found out that it was. I was like, oh, okay. I guess that's where we're at. Font utils is everywhere. I may have to just make it. Uh, I'm trying to find a way to like again get all, take any common code that's shared between the various LED uh, LCD um, <laughs> LED between the different screen implementations and bring all their common code into into some places like make some APIs that are like yeah you want to do strings and okay here you, you want to draw you want to send some stuff to a screen okay you know and like just kind of start to take their common bits and combine them as much as possible. I did a fairly good job with the Ender 3 V2 pile, um, but I can see there's still some room for improvement there. And now, right now, there's like uh, there's Pro UI and Gyres UI are both still being side developed, and I'm not getting a lot of uh, submissions from those. I occasionally get some from Pro UI, but um, Gyres UI is pretty much you know its own thing. Um, the uh, the main developer over there was uh, being really whiny about <laughs> like the behavior of pro UI guy, which I could understand. And I was also in my, you know, between my bouts of coding, I was also whining to myself about him. So, it was, you know, it wasn't like I wasn't sympathetic, but it was just like, there's nothing I could do at the moment. And it was just, it was just filling up our chat with a bunch of noise. So I just took issue with that. And he was like, oh, well, you're gonna get mad at me and not mad at him. Welcome to 2022. <laughs> <laughs> this is the way everybody is. Everybody's this ducking away. It's like, Jesus, you can't say boo without sending people flying off the handle and disappearing into the void. Yeah. <laughs> that goes for the dude who took off on the, because of the um, out of order execution stuff. That's where the, the host can send a command to Marlin and it'll be like, oh, it's one of those commands. I'll take it right away. Oh, and there's no line number on it. It must not be part of a print job, so I'll just run it right away. Um, yeah, I, I have a, I have a problem with that. Oh, okay, that's my neighbor. I have this strange sound. I thought it was the the vacuum robot was doing something, but yeah, my neighbor. Whenever they run their water, it sounds like a, it sounds like a machine is running next door. But it's just a matter of like, I can close doors and it'll like, the sound will be gone. In fact, it's so distracting, I'm gonna do that.
Zunk. There you go. That's better. Uh, yeah, I can't hear a thing now. It's lovely. It's amazing sound, man. Okay. <laughs> I was learning a little bit about tinnitus yesterday and, um, and you know, the different ranges of hearing loss that people have. Like, you can have low hearing loss, uh, high range hearing loss. You know, you can have perfectly normal hearing in certain ranges, or you can, like, have things where, uh, like, above a certain amplitude you can hear certain sounds, but then below it, you, like, suddenly you can't. And, like, yeah, all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, I have tinnitus, which I think mainly emanates from the dental issues I th and other things. Like, there's probably bacteria getting up in my jaw, kind of getting up in my ear canals, stimulating those little hairs, and uh, making my my ears ring. But I, I found that if I, uh, you know, as anybody, if you've got tinnitus, you know, like, you can manipulate your neck and do this kind of thing, pull on your jaw, oh. and that'll make the sound change. You can, you know, you can just do things like clench, brr, and that'll make the sound change. Um, so what I've been finding is just, like, I want to do lots of, you know, like, uh, loosening up in the shoulders you do like this kind of thing you take a deep breath and it makes all these all these tendons and things kind of stretch out a little bit if you do that regularly it'll help to relieve some of that and these nerves are, are kind of like involved in some regard because all it's all of a complex you know you've got shoulder neck you know lumbar upper spine lower spine and like you know you can have a tiny like thing that's messed up in your jaw for example it can throw off your hip you know like it's weird because like it'll just be like you've got these nerves that are responding to balance something and so they'll say oh this is balanced this way and so I'll just sort of generate a little bit of muscular tension in that direction and suddenly you've got muscular tension unbalanced and some other thing is responding to that and another thing is responding to that if you've ever had tendonitis it's kind of like that uh, so yeah it's like strange um, so here we have, uh, here's an example of my string class. This is what we're going to be debugging today in the simulator. Uh, so here's a string that is 100 bytes of, in size, which is supposed to reserve 100 bytes on the stack, basically, and give you space to put some string stuff together. So it means that if the stack were to be, if any of this were to like uh, screw up, it would potentially overwrite things that are later in the stack. It depends on how the stack works. A stack can go from, it can start low and low memory, address 10 or whatever, and go up to, let's say, address 110. We'll say we have a 100 byte stack. You could go from this way to this way, and you could put everything on this way. And then when you pull stuff off, you could pull it off this way. Or you could decide it's this big, and you could start by sticking stuff on the end way over here, and it builds, and it goes towards this direction so that, you know. But the problem with that is if you do it this way, it, um, well, I should say, from your perspective that way. <laughs> if you do it where you start at the end, it means that if you overwrite, you're gonna be overwriting exactly the return address that you just stuck on there. Uh, but if you do it the other way, where you reserve starting at the top and, and go forward in memory, it means that if you were to um, overwrite the buffer that you just happened to allocate, it doesn't matter, you'll be fine. It won't overwrite anything on the stack because there isn't anything after it on the stack. But that's the trick, you know, like how do you make sure that the thing is always last in the stack? You can't be guaranteed. There's always something. So it's like those two schemes. So the best way to deal with it is I just made my string class such that it won't overwrite anything on the stack. If you try to write too many bytes into it, it just won't write any, it won't write them. If the string is already full, it won't, it'll just ignore your uh, attempt to add more stuff. So it's basically like that. Um, so at this point, um, I am going to see why this is what's going on. Is it actually is crashing? <laughs> so I'm going to turn off my external here, uh, which I don't need. My external box, which is stupid anyway. Stupid. And um, we'll pull up the sim and we'll use that. So let's get back to my string class. Pull over. Pull that over to the simulator. And this is typically how I'll do things: is I'll just bring some stuff over do a new build and we'll run it. Uh, I guess I'll go with debug. And as far as debugging the simulator, there is a way to do it. There is a way. Oh, and this thing, apparently, oops. Yeah, so some of my code is not looking, it's not liking it. It may be because I'm building it natively and I've just never tried this before. Um, this is the first time I've tried building it natively and I guess it's possible that 
I've run into issues with the compiler itself. Like, we'll see. But I mean, I can build this fine for, um, I think I can build it fine <laughs> for other platforms. I've had no issues. I mean, you can see it's passing. The string class is passing its tests, several of them. So uh, it's just this particular one. So I don't know why this one particular one uh, is not passing. Well, let's learn. Let's learn. All right, so the first thing is, yeah, monitor flags is not known. Um, I guess that's because I haven't updated my platform I.O. on here yet. Maybe I did. Let's check the version. Yeah, we are on 6.1. Okay, so we are good. I, you know what it is? It's that I haven't brought over the... That's for me. It's complaining about older options, not newer ones. Um, so we're good. Okay, so that's fine. Moving on. Uh, the next thing is that it says in cancel object, I've screwed up something. Uh, so it's apparently it's not just a string class itself, which is good. So let's get over there and get that out of here as well. We're just going to be, we're going to be going straight to the code here in this. We'll use this file to do everything. This program, stay in one program and make everybody happy. Um, cancel, it'll certainly make the Visual Studio Code developers happy. Okay, so we're looking at line 23, which hopefully is not an include. Of course it is. Uh, so, okay, what's going on? It includes something which in member function, size 42, inherited from size 42. Oh, inline, I see. Okay, well, let's take a look at the line and see what's going on with it. So the actual line itself is uh, in member function. This T is M string point. Oh, it's M string 42 pointer. Well, that's interesting. I would think it would be a uh, an M string 42 object, not a pointer. Interesting. Inline from size set with T and args. Okay, so this is interesting because, yeah, I wanted to be able to set a string with any number of inputs. And I thought, you know, I could just use, I mean, it's C++, so you should be able to use this kind of like continued more arguments kind of thing. Variadic, as they're sometimes called. Uh, and I was trying to get it in such a way that I could do it without having it, like, especially for the printf part, I wanted to do it such that it would pass it on to printf, but I didn't have to actually implement the whole vargs. There's like a whole little dance you have to do. It's not a big deal, but it's it's annoying that you have to do it. Um, but that's old school, and now we're in, you know, like C, even C has that. Like, this is C++, man. Uh, you know, that was all done for the, for the benefit of printf, basically. So you could have you know, a pattern and then any number of arguments. And it would figure out what to do with them by doing sort of a recursive, well, not a recursive, but it would like call, you know, for the next, each one and do the right thing based on the type. And or the, uh, you know, pattern that you set. That stuff's probably built into the compiler at this point, even. So yeah, we've got this going on. And um, I'm just thinking this one here, it just seems to be Oh, you know what it might be? Maybe. Oh, that's nice. When you're when you have this focused, like you can't actually do a find, you have to click over here first. Yeah. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. This apparently is giving some kind of issue. Um, set arg1 append more. So I went set arg1 and then append more. So I, maybe I should just go with append arg1 more and let that happen. I'm not entirely sure, but I mean, this is a set and then you have more stuff. And so of course you naturally want to append. Um, it may be that I don't have an append defined at this point and that's why it's complaining. Let's take a look. Warning, anonymous may be used uninitialized. Okay. Oh, you know what it may be too is that I'm trying to do something where I'm using M. Oh, I have to take a close look, but here it is, and you can see I'm doing a get text f on it. 
Um, I'm setting a status on this thing. Oh, you know what? I, it's supposed to take the address. I have an, um, a thing to take the address. And maybe that's what's going on. Let's see, argument two of this thing. Does it mean that one? It's hard to tell what, how to interpret messages sometimes, isn't it? All right, let's take a look. Let's bring this over here while we do that. see the uh, intense looks that I'm giving while I'm doing code. <laughs> Maybe I should put this a little low. I found that, uh, you know, slightly more attractive from a lower angle, so. As you all know. Uh, okay, let's see here. Where are we going? Vain, vain, vain. I blame my mom. Let's see, here we go. Um, Set active object here. Here we go. Uh, M string in member function, M string reference, I guess, uh, M string size, because that's what you want to return. Um, oh, you know what? I might have forgotten to say is re no, I did, there's a return in there. Yeah, it says return set append, which should do everything that it's supposed to do. Um, so this interesting that I have an append here, and then I have a set immediately following it, I guess, because it wouldn't recognize it otherwise. And this is interesting, as it says, um, it returns append dot append dot, which seems to me like it should just do this. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, it ends up, it'll end up calling back to itself. So it's kind of recursive. I want to append one thing, and then I want to continue by appending more things. In order to do that, I'm just gonna call myself to append one thing <laughs> and more things. And eventually it'll just be calling the one, append one thing at the end. Like this last thing will just be, it'll end up being, the last two will just be append, append, I think. I think that's how it ends up, ends up working out that way. Um, and that's so it actually will call not back to itself. It's only the, occasionally that'll do that. And that recursion is another question too, is like, you know, if you're doing recursion, it's gonna build on the stack. But it depends on how you how your recur what your recursion's about. Um, like, is it really recursing? <laughs> yes, actually, in this case, it is. But it, but it, the final result when it gets the code output is going to be you know just it's building a string. You know, you're going to get the standard building a string op output. So if you've looked at s these kinds of classes before, then you know. Um, so the first thing is it calls return set arg1, and it seems to me like it's not going to be able to call it itself because, the, well, no, I guess it will because it's it's only about the size of the string. Like once you've got that set up, you're good. So I'm not sure. It says it's uninitialized, which is another part. Anonymous may be uninitialized, which it shouldn't be. What does that even mean? Um, I mean, we can, we can check, but I don't know what that means. And also, again, this may simply be a, um, I mean, it seems to just be an issue with the, the Linux compiler. It's not like there's a bug. Unless I don't have cancel objects turned on anywhere else, in which case, yeah, sure. But maybe that's not the main cause. I don't know. What do you think? Should I look at that string class and see? like the actual string class code and up there and like maybe do a tweak where I turn on the, uh, well, it's got it on, it's got to, it's already doing a simulator build, I'm sure, as part of the uh, normal CI tests, right? Am I mistaken on that? If it's not, I could add it, I suppose. Um, let's take a look. Test builds. So, hmm, maybe I don't have a simulator build as a test. I could add one, I guess. I'm 
I'm kind of surprised there isn't even a Linux build. I thought there was. Oh, wait, there it is, Linux native. Okay, so that should work just as a Linux native build. Like, we already have it. Um, and that's actually here. You can see it's using the Linux ramps, but um, it's not necessarily enabling everything. I mean, I could try. I mean, I could, I, yeah, I don't really want to try this build. <laughs> um, what I do want to do is catch this bug, though. I mean, like, um, I mean, I guess it's possible that it's a bug in there. Like, let's let's just change that. Like here and see if it builds. Like, if I change this to the um, address of this thing, let's try that. I keep forgetting I'm. I have to stay in the same thing. All right, let's clear that. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay, that worked. So it just needed to take the address. The other the way uh, the other way to do that is um, yeah, because it's it makes sense. The other way I was thinking of doing it was you would just say, um, I mean, this is unfortunately I can't do, but hey, look, look, see, it's the uh, it's the bloody copilot's come is chiming in. Gotta love it. Let's close these. Um, but uh, yeah, Copilot will chime in with some good ideas, hopefully. So yeah, the idea here is I want to say status message. Uh, and I would just say, you know, set, you know, to uh, whatever. The other thing you could also do is uh, it's a string. It is a, uh, a string. So yeah, so you could just say basically just yeah, set or set F to do a printf on it. Cancel object, percent D like that right which is just basically what it does so I could do this for example uh, set F and then give me this you know as my pattern and you know if you go looking for this uh, in the English file it looks like uh, this oops printing object doesn't have a number on it or anything like that so you wouldn't want to use it as a printf thing. But yeah, the idea is you could do setup on it. But the thing is I have we have um, different levels of, of alerts, so it's like you want to not set it if the alert level is too low. So one way to deal with it would be to have it be like, you know, extended extend the class. Because I've done that, I did that for a serial string. All I did was extended the M string class and added echo an echo line methods to it and that allows you to um, do what you know just X send them out to serial without having to call something separate so you know without apparently calling something separate even though it does so yeah that's great okay so now the thing is I just need to look at this is what I really want to look at was the uh, the bloody string behavior and it was causing real headache here in startup so here I have uh, this is where I was starting to do my test. So does this work? It was supposed to print out string test one of one, two, three, four, five. Uh, let's take a look at what we got. So run the simulator. Great. Okay, so the first output is, it actually does say, oh, did it quit? It did. Okay, so now we're getting some, <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, see, it wasn't quitting before, but now that my string class is here. Oh yeah, no problem. You want, you want some quits? We got quits. Um, so let's take a look at our run pile here. So it said, this is how it runs it. It runs it in a hidden terminal. It's supposed to actually, um, when it exits, it's supposed to actually close this. But I, you know, as I'm running it in the background like this here, I guess I could run it and then have it close this when you when you quit it. Like I could do something along the lines of like. And I don't know why it says you have running jobs when you say exit. Like if I said exit right here, like it works fine. So it may be that it just needs like a, uh, it needs to do a sleep or something. Marlin simulator. Uh, you know, an 
and exit or exit I don't know what you do or exit um, it'll yep. for some reason it won't run that way <laughs> let's see what else can be done let's just run it just like that neat yeah, so the, I could run this. Oh, there we go. It's crashing at some point. Yeah, my string class is so screwy. So what I want to do is get it into the debugger somehow. So let's try and get that running. I actually have, here's the clues in Marlin to how, how do you get this in the debugger, you might wonder. Well, there are ways, ways. And the, how we do it is we have build root. I think it's under share. Um, debugging launch.json so here's the sim and basically I'll copy this into a file called launch.json that is um, provided by PI uh, that's in here or the VS code folder and yeah you can see I've got all these in here so let's just replace all of them right now um, I'd like to have some way through the config to be able to modify this, but. So here we have debug sim, and now we're using the Marlin sim, and we're using this one, and I think it's in the right place. And I actually have, in this case, I'm, I'm forced to use my own GGDB, and I'm not sure where that's at. So that's really kind of a big deal. Like if I really want to debug this, that's, that's where the, that's going to be a, a challenge. So let's try and, um, see if there's a way to, to run this. Oh, I guess the way I would do it is I'd go to the debug. There I have debug sim set up and just supposed to run the simulator. Oop, it says does not exist. Okay. So we need to make sure it exists. Let's go to here. Click on that. And that shows us that it does exist at a certain place. But what is the, it's a simulator Mac OS debug and it's in a folder called debug. Okay, let's fix that. I'm not sure why we stick it in the debug, but we do. So let's try that. Oh, does not exist. Oh, it may be that it's just called simulator now. This is this a mistake? No, it's called Marlin Simulator. Um, it may need to use the, uh, do something like this. It says current working directory workspace root though. Well, we can keep trying this until something works. It did not complain that time but I have a weird feeling it's my GGDB. I don't know if I've got it fully set up yet or you have to sign it and all this other stuff. It's a rather big deal. Um, let's find out it's sort of slowly spinning here. Oh, I see that's copilot. Oh, we can totally uh, disable globally for the moment. I don't necessarily need that in my face right now. But yeah, it looks like it's uh, it's supposed to be running, but I don't think it is. It's almost like it tried to run it, but didn't. Let's take a look at the console. Yeah, there isn't much coming out, huh? Oh, thank you. Jupiter, I haven't really gotten into Jupiter yet. But yeah, the debug console should be telling us everything we need to know, but um, G, O, it looks like it's got something going on, A, nothing, question mark, yeah, it's not being very helpful. And let's see what we got, Cortex, Edge. Let's see if I got something. Platform IO debugger. 
I assume that's something at a lower level, like JavaScript type stuff. Um, yeah, I guess all I really wanted was LLDB. I could try that, but. So here's an LLDB launch. CWD, file dir name. What's this supposed to be? The working directory of the target. Oh, that's kind of cool. I wonder if that ends up being like um, something like this. Let's kill it. Oof. So yeah, it's canceled, so it never started. And let's see what we get if we do. Uh, this is called LLDB launch. Let's just see what that does. Ah, I can't find your uh, maker firmware model firmware A dot out. Wow, that's strange. I wonder what it's looking, why it's looking for A dot out. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Enter program name. Well, yeah, you got to do the program name. So that's supposed to be that. Oops, let's fill that in. Okay, once again. Oh, it says there is no, oh, it's using VS code instead. File dir is where, oh, that's strange. It says what, uh, VS code debug. Oh, okay, so it's the dot VS code folder is, is the file dir name, that's strange. Um, all right, let's try that. Uh, it says here, yep, <laughs> I forgot to include the rest of this stuff. We'll just throw that there and what the heck is it? Throw that there too. Once again, this may not work. Again, LLDB is sketchy. What? Oh, cool. Developer tools needs to take control of another process for debugging. Hey, okay, it is running. And if it's debugging, that means it should, when it crashes, fall into the debugger and it will crash. Oh, it has crashed. Um, we're not getting much info about that. So it should be somewhere in this general vicinity. Well, we don't really know where it's crashing at all. All we know is we have uh, call stacks. We have other things. I don't know if I pointed to the ELF file either, if it even has an ELF file. Does it need an ELF file? I think it does. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Well, okay, so here we are. It appears to be, it's still running, it says. But as you can see, it's not. I mean, I can't bring it forward. What if we simply pause it? Nope, okay. We need to know. Let's take a look at the debug. Variables, watch, call stack, like you would think. And it does say running, running, running thing is true. So my thought is probably my debug session is just not quite right. Let's see what it says. Like all these say, like it's doing some something in the frameworks, like net auth symbols, blah, blah. Symbols. Uh, okay. So what's going on? A, G, O, B, like nothing seems to be doing anything. Q, <laughs> quit. Exit, like nothing. It's just, it's a debug console, but it doesn't seem to do much. Um, all right, let's close that. Console, let's kill the process. Let's see if we can't figure out a way to get it to crash into our debug. Um, I mean, if we build again, I don't know if there's anything else to be done. I mean, it should have all the flags. Um, 
I could add some extra flags, I suppose, to the build. Oh, I need the uh, native.ini, I think. Let me go down to macOS. GL stack protector. It's great that it works, man. I'm so happy. Um, I don't even remember when I installed STL2, but they are there. Um, under opt local, like lots of all the stuff I could put in opt, you know, using Mac ports uh, is what I did. There's probably, uh, you'd have to do something different with homebrew. If there is, I'll do something like simulator Mac OS brew for people who like brew. Um, so yeah, we have this, then we've got framework OpenGL, framework core, library SEL2, and then no stack protector is pretty much the whole thing. And then we build on um, then that's built on Linux debug. So this is just stuff that gets added into the build. So the debug build is actually all that plus these other things. So you get your Linux debug, Linux debug build flags, plus the Mac debug build flags, plus the rest of these. Um, and custom verbose is zero, and custom GCC is G++. Okay, so not much more I can do with that. It's just, it builds how it builds. And GGDB is supposed to create some cool stuff that, you know, that might be the issue is I'm not using GGDB. So let's go to my uh, my launch again and we'll change it to uh, GG. Let's see if that makes any difference. Run. Hmm. Required attribute MI mode. Okay, good. I think I do have that down here somewhere. There it is. Oh, unfortunately, it's GDB. Okay, we just need to have something that is usable. Um, but the project system is invalid. Please specify the MI debugger path option. Oh, there it is. I think we're getting close to what we had before down here, but that's fine. I just need to know that I have something that I can launch GGDB with. And yeah, as you can see, the GGDB is, let's take a look and see what we happens if we just try to launch it by command line. Yeah, it's 11.2, it does work. Let's see what it is. Has in it. So it is an x86. There's our problem. There is your problem. So we need, again, I, I need to find a working, uh, you know, thing. LLDB, what's that? Yeah, I got to use which because I don't know the path. Um, but yeah, this one is actually x86 64 and arm 64 e which is great um, and again which LLDB is that I know I could type that it's user bin LLDB so I could just try using LLDB but I, I feel like it's screwy <laughs> there's something screwy about it um, because it's not corresponding to this GCC necessarily um, is there an op local bin with uh, LLDB. There is no LLDB here inside of there. I wonder if there would be something we'd even do. Um, okay, so if that's the case, so it does run for us, which is nice, but I don't know about the attached part. That might be the part that's trouble. That's hard to say. It also comes down to like, what compiler was used to build this with and it's using well it it, it seems to be using um, I want to say GCC instead of Clang but let me do a quick build again oh 
it silent. Let's do this. Turn off the silent build and do a build. All right, now we're looking at our output. Uh, yeah, is IMG UI. That's the uh, that's the GUI tool set that it uses. So here it is, building in debug mode. It is up to date. Okay, great. So now what? <laughs> Clearly, this isn't working, um, but it's kind of what I feel like I need to do. But what did it build with? Building in debug mode is all it says. It doesn't really tell us what compiler it's using. Um, it should be using the native compiler, obviously. So let's take a quick peek at um, that INI file again. Anything that we did there that makes a difference? So Linux native is going to be using oh, the platform is native. So whatever the plat the native platform is, that ends up being whatever your compiler is. So your native compiler. In my case, um, this actually has a dash ggdb on it, which is supposed to produce symbols suitable for ggdb. Um, so I don't even need necessarily to add it to my flags if it's already there. But um, see what else this does. So is Linux native do anything? No, this is all by itself. Okay, so then you have this the simulator, that's the one we're looking at. So it doesn't actually have GDDB in it. Oh wait, yes it does, down here. Debug build flags. Okay. Oh and look, it actually has them here too. But it, unfl it removes them from, from this build. Yeah, okay, I'm seeing what's going on. So yeah, this could actually just be added down here. And then not added down here, for example. So, I should have looked a little closer because I might have chosen that. Either way, it's fine. Um, so that is the SimUI. And as far as I know, that's fine. I mean, it certainly works. Then we have a script called simulator.py, which I guess I should look at that. Yeah, .py, and what does that do? It does um, it does change the name, so it has a Milan simulator name. Um, then it imports this, checks, oh, I have to, I did a little tweak because ran lib flags, like it outputs messages about them and I could only get rid of half of them by changing, uh, by, f by adding something here. No warning for enough symbols, that one. Uh, but yeah, so then you have this where it's like, uh, well, look for Mesa, look for Xcode, look for OpenGL, um, and tries to figure out where OpenGL is. Can. And it mentions uh, Mesa, just in case your code needed to do something in response to it not being OpenGL, but Mesa instead. Um, and that's all that's about. And actually you can just install it and I think it'll still work. And then it just adds a custom target called upload with the right name. So I'm not sure, an upload target I guess is what it does. Um, and it specifies the build directory and all that. So yeah, not much going on here. It's just really about the build. I thought it might add some flags or something. All right, so I could try. Oh, wait, the, well, we know our problem is that uh, lib, that our GGDB debugger is not good. It's not M1 based. So let's see if we can get um, let's get the ports updated and see what's going on with that. Eight thirty already. Wow, I am uh, Saturday night, and it's like holiday weekend. And I tell you, I am feeling like getting me a pizza or something. <laughs> you know, just in the mood to not to be a little lazy. But I made all this chili the other day, uh, so it's chili. I'm eating chili. <laughs> 
All right. Um, I forget if it's a thing. Oh, it's actually, maybe it's GDB. So yeah, there's this whole, I don't even remember if this all build, I think it's probably building by now, but look, ARM64, does say ARM64 on libicon. I really, really want the uh, GGDB for ARM. This is the one minor block so like I can do all kinds of things as far as printing out, like I suppose I could print out the address of every string when it's created and create a little debug flag in there. Um, but actually the M string class is pretty, pretty piddling and it doesn't have a lot going on as far as um, resources that I can use. Like I can't within it just say, oh, print a serial. I might be able to do something like call an external function that is named. So that might be the way to go is just stick an extern on there and say, yeah, call that. And um, yeah, I think it's probably the best way to go. That way I can debug uh, the string as it's being modified and also like print out its address and things like that. So let's, let's get a little of that going while we're doing this um, install of GDB. I'll go back to um, VS Code. We'll uh, go back to the files. And I'll add a little debugging to our string. And all you really need to do is just print out, I think, the address of the string, the length of the string, and maybe the string itself. So what I'm going to do is just, um, I'll give it the ability to send to serial. So let's see. That means I'm going to need something out of serial.h. Let's see, I guess void serial echo. Can I do that as an extern? I think I can. Extern template type name, blah, 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 void. and also a serial echo line. So let's see if that works. If I can just stick them in here and have them be externs. <coughs> and, <coughs> sorry. So extern, does this work? I wonder if that's even possible, you know. I mean, it's just all we want is a <coughs> is a reasonable function signature. <coughs> and let's see if it builds. What? It does. Okay, but I haven't actually referred to them yet. That's where it'll get hairy. Um, okay, so it's still giving me crap when I try to build under the simulator, which is strange, because I thought I had it working a second ago. <laughs> um, oh, wait. <clears throat> yeah, it's giving me crap. Under settings? Come on, it built before. Let's see if M string is mentioned or something like that. Yeah, that's another one of those cases where it's like return set arg1. Who's doing it? Marlin UI CPP in function. Yeah, I keep saying uninitialize. I don't know what that means. Uh, there's set status. T 
taking an m-string reference. <clears throat> it's called set status with um, using the address. Let's just be a pass through. Again, this is a challenging little class we're building here. Yeah, I feel like this is being done somewhere straight. Oh, you know what it may be? Um, it's maybe that it's confused in some regard. Like, I shouldn't have to say set status with the address of the thing because I actually have it taking this. but. It occurred to me that like I was trying to do this thing where I was like, okay, well, max message length, right? Set status, take a, you know, it should take, um, I feel like I have to implement every single one. This thing is I can't just call set status with like nothing. I have to say set status with something that has a size or a class. It may be that that's the thing. Set status with the class and then it calls. But I mean, it can't build it. Templates are weird. Like they are checked at, at compile time, like when they're defining, they're, they're defining how a class might be emitted or a function might be emitted. And then when you actually use it, like with a particular type, then it finally does get emitted. And so there's some checking that's done at the point before any of that emission happens. But I'm thinking like, like if you never use the class, it would still do some checking of the syntax. But if you do use the class, then it does additional things that you wouldn't necessarily get. Like it'll notice, oh, I can't do that for that type. Whereas with the uh, regular stuff, it might say, oh, yeah, I can do that with that type. And I don't know, it gets weird. So yeah, this is a little annoying because it's doing it a lot here. And I know that each one is being stimulated by something different. Um, so like notion.cpp, well, let's take a look at places where I call set status. Apparently that's where it's maybe getting tripped up. I'm not sure. And here we are in this editor again. I'm telling you, this, I, I just find it easier to use Sublime because it's just quicker. This kind of search here is like I can't really make head or hair, head or tails of it. 120 resolution results. Hey, show me in the editor. Sure, but is that any better? Eh, maybe a little. But uh, yeah, we want to find. Um, yeah, we're actually looking for set status, okay. It doesn't like keep the same search string for both, which is uh, fine, but no. Oh, and also it's not using the full word. So yeah, we want to set that. So that's fewer. So yeah, this one is, uh, that's the weird one. So it's supposed to be able to take an M string. I should just be able to say this. Because that's what it expects. It expects, uh, shit. <laughs> See, I keep, Forgetting this is not what it is. Come on, cancel logic. See, I can edit it right here. Um, so I do like that. So here I should say, instead, I should be saying TS because it expects a TS. Oh, God damn it. It's not letting me save it. What's the point? Yeah, so it's expecting this. It's expecting a max message length. Now, I wish it could just say this. Like, that would be great. Take any M string at all. But the thing is, like, I think that without anything, it is max message length already. It's like, or max string size or something. I don't know. I could try doing that. Let's see what that does when you build it. Again, I keep wanting to go back to the editor for build. And 
Editor for editing and this for building, but I've got to get used to just using VS Code. VS Code. So, hmm, it seems to be building ease better, similar, different? No, still doesn't like it. Um, also, you know, I did modify that without. So that's fine. Yeah, here he's got set alert status and it doesn't have a blank in it. And I should be able to just do that, right? All over the place. Great. Um, this also has an issue with like int8 and bool are similar, so it's like not always sure which one I mean. Uh, and like setting the state, I just we have too many set status things, and I think they just need to be broken down. I was going to change one to like set alert when it has a level, right? Because that's not status, that's alert. Um, if you want to set the status, you would basically just be like, check the alert level, and if it's anything, then don't set the status. Like, if it's not zero, then don't set the status. But if it's an alert, then you would set a level for it. And uh, yeah, why it's a reference here? I Oh, yeah, it's an important reason because it actually modifies the level. Um, it makes some of these take a simple level value, which is not a reference, which is fine. So that's interesting. Set alert level. So I could use it could all be const actually, I think. Maybe not this one. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I got to sort of break them down. Break it down to the minimum, come up with some standards and just get rid of all the uh, confusion between those. And then, yeah, because the other one is persists. Like, does it persist? And what does that mean, that it persists? It just means that it's got a higher level than, you know. So it's like any like anything. Um, persist equals false, right? Why persists? What's persist about? So, yeah, I need to explore that. So, yeah, I think I'm feeling like this whole thing with the end string is kind of a pointless thing. I, what I should be doing is having it, like, what it should do is, like, automatically convert it to a char pointer, which it can coerce itself to a char pointer. So my thought is I could just char pointer it, like, and that would do the trick. But let's see what happens there. Okay, we're in Visual Studio Code. So when I call it in, oh, I don't know, where did I do it before? TS, so there's this one. So what if I said, Well, I'm supposed to be able to just say address of it, and that would do it because it's. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I just can't set set it as an M string. So, let's get rid of that. That's an that's just dumb. So let's go to Marlin UI. Say UI.h, and we'll get rid of all these M string things. That's fine. Set alert status. Okay, so there's one M string here, and that's just the string itself. And then um, the other thing is we need to go to its counterpart, which I'm telling you, man, I want that shortcut but it's not there it used to be uh that was command option up arrow or some command control up some key combo that would open the counterpart but now i have to like go to this from ui.cpp please um that one yeah or you know use the file browser which i guess you could always do and um, yeah, find M string here. What do we got? Set alert states with an M string? No. Okay, let's see if that does anything. I mean, maybe things won't build now. But yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, I'd like to be able to just pass an M string arbitrarily. That's obviously an important aspect. But the thing is, it, it ha it's a template class, and so that screws things up a bit. Right, so here you have set status to yes. And that's got to be changed to address of yes. All right. And supposedly that's good. Build. And okay, we are now at this UI set status message thing. There's no way to find this, just make a copy. There you are. So here we have to say address of message. Assuming. Oh, wait, this one is <laughs> correct. We can check our output later. Uh, but yeah, this one obviously, not yet, not yet. Some of these are gonna definitely be turned into what we want, like that mail up in here. Like all these printf things everywhere are gonna get changed. But first we must, so here we have a message which is actually a serial string. And so we can actually take the address of that. Um, Let's take a quick look for this just to make sure we didn't change ones we weren't supposed to, which we probably did. Nope, those are all good. And yeah, okay, I think we're good. The build, we'll see what, what's left. But yeah, it's uh, operator ampersand is a fine way to get access to the data inside. I mean, how often do you really want to take the address of a, a string class itself? Like, there's no point. But if you take the address of it, its mem of its string inside, then that makes much more sense. All right, so where did we go as far as, um, well, our simulator is apparently running <laughs> and not well. So let's go kill the, uh, let's go kill the simulator here. Let's see. Show me that run window. Is it our run window? Okay, well, I'm not sure how it's running, but let's go with uh, sudo kill all. I may not need sudo actually. Maybe I do need sudo. Oh, the old shoulders are giving me some trouble now. Yeah. In between going between the mouse and the uh, trackpad, well, one or one of the other is, huh, does not want to quit. Well, we did update GDB to twelve something. Um, let's see what we've got for. Op local bin. Oh, I have still haven't code signed it. Um, I may need to do that. Oh, it's still only. It's still only until. This is really annoying. So I don't have a debugger that I can actually utilize for this. I'd like to use the debugger that built it. Um, you know, basically, it should be the one corresponding. You know. Uh, and I am using G++, I guess. And that one's ARM64. That's astounding. So So what's going on with that?
what is going on with that? So we have a G++ in here, which actually is native, but not a GGDB. That's very peculiar. Is there a GDB of some kind? But there it is. That's our GGDB. We did say upgrade, and it went to version 12, I think. Yeah, it launched and installed 12. Let's make sure it's only 12. I mean, I can do that. I mean, it should only be. So let's just do this. Um, sudo port reclaim. This will just make sure that nothing um, old is hanging around. So yes, yeah, auto comp and for sure older versions of those. And then it wants to remove older GDB. So that's fine too. <laughs> And we can delete those. Okay, so now Yeah, it's still x86 64. I really need to get me a ARM64 version of GGDB, so I'm gonna find one. ARM64 M1 build. GGDB, please. Um, I'm going to go with must include GGDB because they need it. Or even a working GDB would be good. I mean, what do we have as far as that goes? Um, does it have to be GGDB? And is there a, also there's an Apple thing as well? Um, let's list that directory again and look for uh, GDB. Oops, I meant to say grep. <laughs> GDB. And um, let's see what else, GCC. Yeah, see here we've got these, ARM64, Apple, Darwin, GCC stuff, which is all actually, that's very interesting, right? Let's see what there is in, term, in terms of ports that maybe there's a special one for this or a special option. Um, I want to say find or search. I can never remember which one it is. Uh, let's just say ARM64. Okay, Keystone. So it does, it does do a search. Pseudo port grep arm 64. Sometimes they say that. Nope. No such port grep. <laughs> well, it did search it and it found that, but I'm looking for a name. So I want to say pseudo port um, all, and then I'll grep it myself. Oh, installed. You can do that kind of thing, it lists them. you like that but it doesn't tell you much so I could grip um, you know GCC GDB things like that so we have a um, there's a GDB M I'm not sure what that's all about and some other stuff going on there's a GCC 11 and a GDB 12 oh and also you can say pseudo port um, you don't have to say pseudo all the time Contents, I think, and you can name something like GDB. Yeah, it tells you what it installs and where. In this case, in this case, where it is that very direct version of GGDB right there, and it never includes anything like a, an ARM64, anything special here. So. <clears throat> Let's see if there's a mention online about Mac ports trying to, and maybe I just do GDB, I don't know. So here's April 21st, uh, 2021, or April 2021 rather. Uh, debug with GDB. Now I've been through this. I don't know if I've been through this particular file, but some of this stuff is like required to know. Um, 
So yeah, you can't just install that. It's 10.2 and it's mostly broken. Yeah, I found that generally speaking, version nine was working pretty well for me when I was on the Intel. And I would try 10 and 11, they were about sometimes, but yeah, it's, um, so you know, Marlin isn't the only thing with bugs these days, <laughs> occasionally. Um, so yeah, you start that and you sign it. I don't know if I've signed mine yet, but yeah, I've, I have things ready to sign. Um, I just have to go into my notes and find the, uh, the certificate link that I have to do the signing. Oh, rather, <clears throat> I'm sure I already have the file in place as well. So like, yeah, it's, for example, this file, GDB entitlements, XML. It exists. There it is. It's on my, uh, it's in my scratch folder. So it's all ready to go. So have I code signed it? Entitlements, uh, first of all. This is that. And then FSGDB cert, which actually I think mine is called, I'll have to look at my keychain to find out. And that is GDB. It's capital GDB. Okay, just capitalized GDB. And we're going to go with which GGDB. Internal error in code signing subsystem. Sudo code sign? Ah, uh, there we go. That worked that time. Okay, so it's signed and ready to go. Um, but it can't be bugged. I'm, as far as I know, well, there's the thing is like, even though it isn't necessarily running on the same architecture or isn't running the same architecture like that's not as and the way that it attaches to a running process it might not need to be the same architecture in order to debug it in the same way that you don't need a, um, a native gcc to be able to debug uh, or to be able to build code for any platform you don't have to have that build of gcc so possibly so the issue that I was having before was it was hanging, acting up, being weird. So let's return to our debug and try again and see if this time, instead of hanging, we get something else. Ah, quit, exit unexpectedly with a 136. GDB exited unexpectedly. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, says here, yeah, the program has exited with code 42. And that's all we know. Well, we wanted to know that much. We knew it was gonna exit eventually. Um, if we simply run it, I wanna make sure it at least runs. Yeah. Do I have to do another build <laughs> to get it to run? No, it's there. I should just be able to run it. Is it running already? Oh, there it is. I'm going to pull up the activity monitor just so I can kill it when I need to. Cores, cores, cores. So, yeah, let's take a look at... Uh, there it is, not responding. Force quit, please. Ooh, it doesn't want to force quit either. Sometimes things get uh, locked in with the debugger and you just cannot get rid of them. So one thing I have to make sure is that all my processes within this processor totally quit. Like this, what is that? Should be gone, right? Clear console, but can it be closed? I mean, look at all these. Is this what closes it? Clear console, no closed panel, but that doesn't necessarily get rid of the console, right? Right. This used to be easier. I don't know what they did. <laughs> you, could, you could close these things, but quit. 
I don't know what you type in here, you know? Q? Nothing. It's not even taking input. So I don't even know. Let's quit this and start over for a sec. We're back. Make sure our launch JSON is as it was. Yep. Okay, everything is signed. Oh, new stuff popping up. Oh, look, it's inserting things for us. But it's leaving our stuff alone, which is nice. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. I think that's uh, maybe a new thing in Platform.io because it actually is like smarter that way. Type Platform.io debug. Mm. That's an interesting one. Type. CDPP debug. I like to know what these what the options are. I think it actually will show us um, here maybe. That's the only option. I mean it knows what these are. Type of configuration, right? In this type it's like platform IO debugger so it knows what these are I just don't know where to find a list of all of all possible debuggers that we could use anyway so we've been through this before the actually the Marlin simulator is still there's one running in the background the 119 megabytes not a big process but the fact that it's still running is really weird uh, I tried to force quit it and would not force quit seen this kind of thing before where you have a process that just will not get quit it won't quit it's not taking up any any time it's just a it's just a process that won't go away and I don't know why I mean I built it it shouldn't be that easy to so the Currently, there is no run, is there? Oh, look at this, uh, here we go. Um, Marlin Firmware Simulator. Contents restored, oh, there's a run. Close that, there's another run. It's not part of either of those. Okay. Let's see what we get when we try to run it. Yeah, it's just telling us uh, you have running jobs, couldn't bind to local port. Very strange. But yeah, that's there's some very peculiar stuff going on with the process. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to quit that. I'm actually going to stop the stream. I'm going to come back after I do a reboot just because I want to clear the process and have a nice fresh system.